For this lesson, I'm using the project file 0501 trim clips on the timeline. And you'll find that project file with the media associated with this lesson. Just double click on the file to open it in Premiere Pro. Once you have the basic structure of your edit right, you'll want to look more carefully at the precise timing of the cuts. Perfecting the timing is part of the art of video editing. Changing the part of the clip you've added to a sequence is called trimming. Let's try this. I've got a sequence open in this project, and this is a pretty reasonable edit with music, voiceover, and multiple visuals. But we want to adjust the timing. Take a look at this clip. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the timeline with the navigator here. And we can see we've got this kids rolling a tire shot. And let's say I want to make the clip shorter. I want to remove part of the clip. Probably the quickest way to do this is to click and drag on the end of the clip you want to change. You'll notice as the cursor gets close to the edge of the clip, you get a, a red arrow indicating that you can trim. In one step, I'm going to click and drag. And as I do, you'll notice the program monitor updates to show the last frame of the clip I'm adjusting. You can see it's changing as I drag with the mouse. On the right hand side of the program monitor, I'm seeing the first frame of the clip after this one. This helps me to decide on the content I want to use. I'm going to release the mouse and the trim has been made. You'll notice that I've left a gap. I'll just move the playhead back so you can see that clip again. This is a perfectly good way to work, but it does leave a gap on the timeline, which kind of makes it a two stage process. You need to deal with the gap unless, of course, you put it there on purpose to add another clip. I should note that by clicking and dragging in a single step, it's a little bit faster to trim. If I single click and release the mouse, I get a trim handle. And when I drag to adjust the last frame of the clip and release, the trim handle is still there. I can click on the background of the timeline to remove that trim handle. Those trim handles are useful for more advanced trimming workflows, but we don't really need them right now. Now I'm going to go over to the tools panel and I'm going to choose this ripple edit tool. I'm going to undo with control Z here on Windows or Command Z on Mac OS a couple of times to restore the clip. Let's try this again. Now I get a yellow arrow and as I click and drag, everything moves along the timeline. I'm just going to undo that so you can see again. Notice that all of the clips after this one are moving and this little piece of audio down on the right is two, but not the piece of audio that's just under the end of the clip. Here we go. I'll just drag this over there. This is called a ripple trim. I'll just undo again. And now under the ripple edit tool in the tools panel, you'll see we have a couple of other options. I'm going to choose the rolling edit tool. And again, we get a different cursor. And this type of trim is going to adjust both clips at once. So as I drag, you'll notice in the program monitor, both the left and right sides are being adjusted. In fact, the rolling edit will extend one clip and shorten the other by exactly the same amount. And this means your sequence won't get longer or shorter. I'll just release the mouse and you can see the trim has been made. I'm going to click and drag again here so you can see there's a limit to how far I can move this trim. You see, as I'm dragging left, the handles get left behind. And that's because there's no more media left in that forest shot. I'm going to go back to the selection tool. I'm going to line up my playhead and I'm going to use another shortcut. On your keyboard, you'll notice the Q and W keys at the top left can be used to trim as well. So I'm pressing W and everything from the playhead to the end of the clip has been removed. I'll just move the playhead out of the way so you can see. I've also, though, removed a piece of the music. I'll undo Control Z or Command Z on Mac OS so you can see that again. I'm going to click a little bit further back. And again, I'm going to press W. And you can see if I move the playhead out of the way, I've removed a piece of the voiceover and a piece of the music. So these Q and W keys and the Q key removes the beginning of the clip. The W key removes the end of the clip. They're really useful, but they remove content from every track, which is not perfect if you've got multiple layers of audio in this way. But we can fix that. I'm going to undo again. And now I'm going to lock those audio tracks. Over on the left in the track header, we've got a number of lock icons, one for each track. And I'm just going to turn these on for these three tracks that aren't used for the sync audio, the audio associated with my clips. Now, no changes can be made to these tracks. You'll notice if I click and drag anywhere here, I can't even touch the clips that are on the tracks. And let's try that again. I'm now going to press the W key 
and you can see the audio is left alone. Again, I'll undo. Now I'm going to press the Q key. It's going to remove the beginning of the clip. And again, nothing happens to those other tracks. I'll just undo again. It's a good idea to make sure you unlock tracks that you've locked temporarily before you continue working on your edit, just to make sure that things work as you expect them to. There are other ways to trim, but many professional editors exclusively adjust the timing of their edits this way.